What's going on, Recon? Good morning. I hope you're well wherever the hell you're at in this kitten-shaped planet. Yours truly, Jeff White Bear Kingsbury. I didn't sleep last night. It was pretty rough. So I'm going to try to patch this together in the best organized, concise way that I can. And you already know that's pretty hard for me to do in the first place. But on today's episode of Strange Recon, we're going to drag you into another unconventional technology and extraordinary <laughs> extraordinary innovation in today's episodes we're diving headfirst into the world of counter uncrewed or unmanned or un whatever the acronym or initialism is this week aerial system <clears throat> cuas of the kinetic variety featuring one at least the formidable mars system you're probably not familiar with it though we have gone over similar kinetic systems like it imagine a drone that doesn't just surveil and observe but actively hunts and neutralizes rogue drones using sheer kinetic force. But that's just the beginning. We'll also explore the plethora of other kinetic options designed to combat the rise and rising tide of unmanned aerial systems and drones. Brace yourself, my friends and weirdos, because the sky is about to undergo a transformation, not from another eclipse or migration of pigeons. I don't know why I wrote that. I'm sorry. If you know the history of pigeons, it makes sense. Uh, but from the emergence of highly affordable weapon systems that are reshaping the dynamics of modern airspace security. Join us on this little adventure. When we get back, we're going to talk about the Mars system and other kinetic weapons and give you a few scenarios that you might already be familiar with. It's almost like they were predicting the future. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and kittens, strap yourself in for another episode of Strange Recon. Let's get it on. Welcome to Strange Recon. I'm here to discuss the so-called flying saucers. You out of your <laughs> mind. There's nothing more than a ob weather observation balloon. Of course, which we, we both knew differently. No, I saw that. I don't give a goddamn what anybody else says about it. I saw that on film. Phil Clasp and kissed my ass. He wasn't there. I was. When you know all the names in every language of that bird, you know nothing, but absolutely nothing about the bird. You're crazy. You're crazy. You're crazy. I like you. But you're crazy. All right, folks. Good morning, Flarky. What's up, Gracie? Dorothy Hawkins, Majest One Two Three, Lord Ludacris. Everyone on the YouTube chat, thank you so much for being here already this morning. I really appreciate it. We're doing better. The show's getting better. We're trying. I'm trying to provide a better product for you, rather than conspiratorial guesses and you know see what sticks to the wall. We're trying to go off of what actually is out there to better understand and engage in conversations. I have to say this now before every episode, so I stop getting hit with these things, I guess, though I don't know if it's actually true or not. Here we go. As an inspiring content creator, I aim to produce informative, engaging reaction videos that provide valuable insights and analysis on existing YouTube content and copyrighted material. My intention is solely focused on critiquing and reviewing the original material in a journalistic manner, offering commentary and fostering meaningful discussion within the online community. It's important to note that my videos, Strange Recon episodes, are not intended to replace or infringe upon the rights of the original creators, but rather to complement their work and contribute to the broader convert, uh, conversation surrounding it. I am committed to upholding ethical standards and respecting intellectual property while delivering content that entertains, informs, and inspires your curiosity and doesn't weaponize it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, on this episode, as I said, we're talking about counter UAS. Oh, sorry. Uh, and whatever acronym they want to use the week, uh, basically every website, every military, every government has a different initialism or acronym. And we're just going to stick with CUS for now. Um, <clears throat> as we navigate the ever-evolving landscape of counter-drone warfare, it becomes evident that traditional methods of electronic warfare may not suffice against the latest autonomous drone technologies. In the past, strategies relied on identifying signals from drone operators um, or the relay station or the vehicle that's relaying them, or the person sitting in a ghillie suit that's relaying the 
the uh, the um, signals. But akin to tracking the trajectory of missiles or intercepting fast-moving threats, you can see where this is going with drones. However, with the proliferation of autonomous drones, a paradigm shift is underway. That's not the right term, but I'm going to use it anyways, since everyone loves it. Necessitating a multi-layer defense akin to countering intercontinental, intercontinental ballistic missiles uh, or other very agile weapon systems. But in this case, we're going to stick with kinetic for just for a little bit. We might talk about some other stuff. But the autonomy embedded in these newer drones presents a formidable challenge, rendering electronic countermeasures less effective. In response, attention turns once again to the kinetic options, including autonomous kinetic solutions. These cutting-edge approaches leverage advanced algorithms and onboard sensors to autonomously detect, track, and neutralize threats in the real time. By embracing autonomy in both offensive and defensive capabilities and capacities, we are poised to adapt to the evolving threat and ensure the integrity of our airspace. As you know, someone working for some security company got a bad back. They retired after 22 years of service. Ugh! The sky! It's filled with drones. What are they going to do? Start shooting at them with their guns? Well, that's one kinetic option, but it's not a realistic one. A bunch of former Wack and Hut employees cannot stop drone swarms, and neither can a chain link fence. So we have to figure out something. So in the face of autonomous drone proliferation, the need for a dynamic and robust defense strategy has never been more pressing, and it's quite obvious, evident to what just came out in the appropriation for the almost trillion dollar National Defense Authorization Act for 2025, or 2024 rather, sorry, I forget what year and space and time I'm in. <laughs> I'm not, okay. Embracing a multi-layered approach and incorporating autonomous kinetic options into our arsenal, we stand ready to confront the challenges uh, posed by these new aerial threats. Stay tuned as we get into it here in a second, Recon. Okay. Let's just let's just play around for a second with a couple scenarios. You know how the ufologists and conspiracy theorists suggest that the DOD and other, I don't know, intelligence organizations that fall under or around the DOD uh, have a method of leaking information about aliens or extraterrestrials or UFOs or whatever into media like news and you know the journalistic stories and stuff like that, but especially movies we've heard this for the last 30 years and probably earlier i don't remember but uh they constantly suggest that movies have actually been true although they've made them absurd and ridiculous so the public just gets entertained and misled but the true ufologists the true researchers know this is a real story for christ's sakes they're just making a mockery of this courtroom your honor all right never mind uh but examples of course that were true in that aspect that people rely on is things like men in black the scene where they they were using tabloids to come up with ufo stories we know that's true we know that certain groups seeking special access program uh special access were basically utilizing tabloids in uh i don't know not realistic stories to suggest there was something far greater going on than there was we we've come to that conclusion and it was kind of laughable we didn't even know about it until just a few years ago though we heard about things from ufologists and conspiracy theorists suggesting men in black was far more real than it was fiction but for a second imagine this i'm gonna give you a little scenario here sun-kissed waves gently lap against the side of a luxurious cruise ship and its passengers are basking in the excitement of a tropical island destination ahead among them you and your friends relishing in anticipation. However, the tranquility of the journey was shattered when an urgent alarm pierces the, the air, echoing across the decks. Passengers quickly ushered back to their cabins. Confusion and concern rippling through the crowd. Is it an iceberg? Oh, well, we're in the tropics. Probably not. Anyways, rippling through the crowd. Before you can reach safety, your eyes caught sight of a menacing swarm of drones descending upon the ship, their present ominence against the blue sky. A scenario that is actually referenced in a few different documents I found. Now, not literally that. I had to write it in something else, uh, into something else. But it was, it's actually uh, kind of a known thing now that terrorist organizations and guerrillas and uh, guerrilla fighters and, uh, and um, 
you know, other primates, no, uh, but pirates and things like that uh, will be utilizing drone swarms to now take out large cruise ships or freighter ships alike. In a blink of an eye, the ship sprang into action. This time it was prepared, deploying its own defenses against the encroaching threat. Among the array of countermeasures chosen stood a kinetic one that's one bad mother. We're talking today about the Mars Interceptor, a cutting-edge innovation unveiled the World Defense Show in Riyadh. The Interceptor is no ordinary drone. It was specialized. It's a specialized UAV killer. Let's bring up some pictures for those that are about to get out of the show just because, <laughs> because they don't want to hear anything more about drones, but they will stay for a little while longer to look at a picture. I get it. I understand. I eat crayons too. Here we go. We're talking about one of two new, well, they're not that new, but they have been unveiled in a new model just recently. We're talking about the Mars Interceptor system. Here is one look at it. And it didn't even pop up. Okay, that's great. What the hell's going on here? Get open, you. Okay, it's open there. Another quadcopter bullet-like thing. Bullet being a key word we're going to be going into here. Developed by the Mars R&D team, this marvel of technology harnessed kinetic energy to swiftly and effectively eliminate hostile drones. As the chaos unfolded around you, you watched in awe as the interceptors took flight. Its seek in, uh, sleek design and advanced capabilities coming to life in the face of danger. With precision and agility, it maneuvered through the air, its mission clear to safeguard the passengers from a crew uh, from our uh, passengers and crew from harm guided with state-of-the-art sensors and artificial intelligence the interceptors closed in on the targets with unwavering determination each calculated move brought it closer to victory its, effic uh, its efficiency unmatched in the heat of battle and despite the intensity of the situation and the overwhelming numbers of, of drones on attack the mars team remains steadfast protecting the lives and property Within each successful interception, they demonstrated the power of innovation and ingenuity in the face of adversity. As threat subsided, the claim, uh, the calm turned, uh, returned to the ship, and you couldn't help but marvel at the defense systems available to stop these drones. Now, let's jump back for a second here from our little fictional scenario. Um, where have you heard? <laughs> where have you heard? uh people in ufology talk about another movie it happens to be another will smith movie i don't know if that's a coincidence it seems to be a pattern with his movie choices <clears throat> scientology l ron habembe anyways um you start to see scenes from the movie independence day rather than predicting the future of an alien invasion something else came to light and that's swarms overwhelming air bases that had literally zero defense to stop them not anything, not in the movies, hell, not even a chain link fence like I just joked about earlier. Uh, we, if you remember scenes from Independence Day, you can remember airmen running to their jets to go stop this massive swarm of aircraft, only to be met with overwhelming odds before they even get in their cockpits and they're destroyed. Entire air bases, El Toro gone, wiped off the map. What could we do about it? Does anyone remember this scene? The iconic movie Independence Day? We witnessed an extraterrestrial invasion where the aliens deployed swarms of attack saucers equipped with powerful direct energy weapons to wreak havoc on Earth. While purely fictional, the scenario surprisingly mirrors the emerging threat posed by massive drone swarms deployed by adversaries against the United States and its allies. You're aware of this, right? Did the, did the conspiracy theorists in ufology have it right? Or did they just take a scene from a fictional movie and miss the bigger picture i'm not sure i'm not sure uh i'm not sure my, our friends and weirdos over in ufo town i will get to that in a second there gracie sorry i'm not sure that uh ufos and uh our friends in ufo town uh predicting that um that this was a true scenario coming to light uh sorry for what it was of course because they don't understand context they get content but they don't understand context. And the context of this, of course, was there was an alien invasion. So why think of it in any other way? But as we sit in 2024 and recognize what's just happening around the world, well, it's obvious. This predicted a more realistic future than we recognize, though it wasn't about aliens. 
It was about UAP, an unregistered drone sent from an unknown location. Who deployed it? We don't know. It's operating autonomously. And they were there to kill us all, I guess. I don't know. Does anyone get the reference I'm trying to make here? Do you see do you see what I'm trying to do? Do you see the magic I'm trying to make here? All right, I'm an idiot. Um, <laughs> you know, these drones rise in an eight in an asymmetric scenario. Oh, okay. Hold on a second, Rick. God, I got someone barking here. Um, uh, you know, the, the, an asymmetric scenario in warfare um, goes like this. Uh, you know, asymmetric warfare capability refers to the ability of one party in a conflict, typically the weaker or less technologically advanced side, to employ unconventional tactics, strategies, or weapons to offset the strengths of its adversaries. I could keep going, but basically that's it. <laughs> Core is barking away here, and uh, I'm trying to give it a second. Okay, here we go. Um, U.S. military is shifting towards kinetic uh, options for countering drones, and they're selecting multiple um, different manufacturers. That U.K.-based um, system known as the uh, Mars system is one that's actually being considered to be picked up in a very high number. For one thing, uh, they they cost next to nothing to make. Let's take a look at some stats real quick before we uh, actually when I tell more bullshit stories about Independence Day and stuff before I lose you on that one. Uh, here is a layout for the Mars. Come on, you son of a bitch. Sorry. We have the Mars Interceptor RS and BS systems. This thing goes like this. I'll bring it up for you so you can see it with your own eyeballs. Here is the PDF they, they put out back a couple of years ago. Okay, it's doing that thing where I can't open it. I apologize. Why don't we just go to the website because I am an idiot. Products, intercept MR, SR, and the other one here. Here's the website for you to see. Mars Interceptor MR, the interceptor of the future of con uh, counter unmanned aerial systems. Notice the box that we talk about constantly. Um, the idea that a uh, box could be just dropped somewhere by our adversaries and the drones under their own power and autonomy go off and do their thing. End-to-end -end CUS capabilities. Accurately targeting and defeating Class 1 and Class 2 UAVs, which is going to mean this thing is probably going to operate within a couple miles probably of the center of where it's deployed for some pretty fairly um, slow drones, but that's okay because we know the advent of these things starts off where the majority of drones produced for under $400 used by a major nation or peer competitor are going to be rather slow. Uh, they have a terminal phase, but they're going to be rather slow. Combining operational experience and innovation, Mars has designed an AI-enabled autonomous interceptor that offers an intelligent, cost-effective, and low collateral solution to neutralize hostile drones. Designed to address threats in all environments, this high-speed craft is capable of defeating Class 1 and Class 2 drones head-on from up to 5 kilometers. Oh, okay, I was, I was wrong. 5 kilometers. Now, I'm not sure what exactly a kilometer is, but I know they measured the, the, uh, from the Shire to Mordor. And, okay, never mind. Using a range of sensors to accurately detect, verify, and respond to UAS threats, the interceptor is embedded with NIDAR core intelligence enabling operators to launch this new agile system in order to defeat fast, high maneuvering targets. See, I should have, I spoke too soon. Fully, fully automatic vertical launch for immediate response to threats. Um, this thing is slick, agile, and looks like a bullet. It also reminds me of DARPA chasing smart bullet technologies. Exacto stuff, if you recall those stories from about, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. Uh, you saw that well, in a world that was evolving to electronic warfare, the industry pivoted back to kinetic. Is it the last holdout for kinetic stuff? I don't know. Electronic warfare and directed energy weapons uh, have been all the rage since the 80s, including this document I have here from the Strategic Defense Initiative that shows that 2025 would be the time frame where these things would be rolled out and cost effective. How they knew that back then? Well, that's pretty goddamn good. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm an idiot. I just I just say things that I'm reading on the interwebs uh, uh, with a little bit of discernment. But uh, yeah. 
Once considered conventional, these munitions have undergone a transformative evolution, um, emerging as autonomous drone killing drones crafted from cutting edge materials, representing a fusion of advanced technology and military innovation. These smart bullets, if you will, offer a formal response to the challenges posed by autonomous drones, with their ability to autonomously track and engage hostile targets. They signify a remarkable convergence of traditional kinetic solutions and modern sophistication, showcasing the enduring relevance. <laughs> relevance and adaptability of munitions in contemporary warfare scenarios. Um, as I said, you know, the industry pivots back and forth. We see it go from, you know, we hear people all the time, you know, the future, we're not going to have bullets anymore. Well, if we see anything from industry leading partners, like when we couldn't get off oil, I think there's going to be some time where we're going to have to see some major market takeovers of uh directed energy systems uh before these things go away kinetic answers will be there probably for our generation uh, uh tr all the way through um it doesn't make much sense when there's like this bungee back and forth if electronic warfare cannot be used to fight autonomous drones because it's no longer having to rely on signals or control from a command and control station or a relay station well then we have to figure out another solution Thank you, Dorothy. I was only, I was, I was only being silly. I, I know that, uh, that, um, I know that, uh, Harry Potter and, uh, <laughs> I know that Harry Potter and, uh, and, and Bilbo Baggins, uh, used the kilometer to get from the Shire to, um, the deck of the, uh, I can't even, never mind. This joke's running out. Sorry. Good morning, Iowa Walks. Everyone in the chat, everyone here, appreciate your time, appreciate you being here. Out running a police helicopter, one drone expert said they may have a small generator on recharge the battery so it can run longer and higher. There is uh, definitely uh, all types of weird innovation solutions that will be chased and countered. One thing is for sure, the U.S. government isn't taking it lightly. I'm sorry that I didn't... What the... F okay. Jesus Christ. Uh, to answer your question from earlier, Gracie, the interceptor range for the beginning systems uh, that will probably go out on the top of striker combat vehicles will have a range up to two kilometers it will reach an altitude of 500 meters and rather quickly. Its maximum speed is 216 kilometers per hour. These are the first generation ones that are already being produced to be like, you know, like a four or five of them on top of a striker um, or another, com maybe a Buffalo combat vehicle. I can't remember what the ar armor personnel carrier. They have a 10 minute charge time and they don't always destroy themselves due to the freaking materials and titanium core they have in themselves. So they're able to return to base sometimes, even after being used. I know a week or two ago on the show, I showed a counter uh, kinetic drone that did the same, but it was cheaper um, and it usually destroyed itself. But if it didn't, just by clipping the, the uh, rotor system of a, of a quadcopter, it could return to base. And these offer the same uh, system. Um, the propulsion on board is an electric DC brushless motor from uh, with open props. Sensors was an EO and IR comms connected to a NIDAR core, NIDAR CUAS autonomy. Weight is only 1.5 kilograms. Its wingspan only <laughs> 400 millimeters. Its length 250 millimeters. And its payload mass has been kept confidential for now. It's response time to another one of Mars systems recognizing, because these systems are bought in tandem, both the awareness, situational awareness, um, the machine learning, if you will, and the actual deployment of these drones are working together. And uh, they have a three second response time and claim they can distinguish between a bird and a very small drone very well. Now, there's others that say that's not true. They'll always deploy after birds and we can't really do much about that. But obviously, we we know when you put a limit on stuff uh, that an adversary is using or what they can't do, we will find a way around it. Um, it is one sick, slick little bullet. Now, I you heard me say um, earlier that uh, these things were considered like the new smart bullet. And again, you may have remember days where like the Exacto program was going on. Extreme accuracy task ordinance initiated in November 2008 by Lockheed Martin and Teledyne scientific and imaging the program aimed to develop a sniper rifle firing smart bullets equipped with advanced technologies like a fin stabilized projectiles spin stabilized projectiles and internal and external arrow action <laughs> actuation actuation 
nailed it probably um uh, control methods like little move maneuverable flaps um and the data derived from this allegedly helped lead to the idea that it uh you know burst rounds kinetic drones and uh even using uh you know things like the cannons that are attached to uh, an apache helicopter by putting them on top of a vehicle were a solution for this um it's pretty interesting times uh you know designed for mobile defense against cuas the interceptor sr system is completely ai enabled like i said offering an intelligent and cost effective solution um you know, even saying that these things might even be able to take on missiles if uh, if they're able to react fast enough. There is no explosives. There is no jet fuel. Uh, they can recharge in just 10 minutes time. And they say it at, uh, <laughs> at wholesale sold to the military at production, they could cost less than $400 in the long run. Consider for a second what a $400 system versus, uh, I don't know, a $400 million tank, what that means in 2024. I said tank, but uh, I, I guess what I, I shouldn't have jumped to that. I meant to say there are multiple other drones out there offering a for, uh, offer, offer, being offered to the military that are under $400, and they're even been used to destroy Russian tanks in the Ukraine. It's pretty insane times. We have, we have a, a new age of warfare where kinetic rounds are coming back. Um, I've shown you episodes in the past where we've looked at the kinetic energy of just the simple... DJI Mavic, well, these things, uh, these things are obviously the same concept, but much greater in uh, their kinetic energy. The um, holy shit! The U.S. military will start leaning towards kinetic options for knocking out drones entirely, and they started in 2022. Um, uh, truly looking into it, the Army is investing heavily in counter drone solutions. Just as I showed you, or as I told, I've told you a hundred times in the show that no one believed me, especially like two and a half years ago when uh, when people are talking about um, the government's trying to figure out this uh, UAP thing because they think they're aliens. Meanwhile, um, UAP are following into the category of of UAS, and they're spending billions of dollars on stopping these things. One company even had a ten year contract for the Air Force for a billion dollars by itself. Um, one of the things I noticed about this. Uh, this newest um come on you son of a gun what the hell u.s senate committed appropriations uh for the defense fiscal year of 2024 appropriations bill by senator patty murray and uh sarah felt feldman uh shows that um right here so you can see it and you know i'm not just pulling this out of my arse this is just an upgrade to the current budget. Counter on man aerial systems, another acronym for you. The bill fully funds the budget request for counter small unmanned aerial systems that provides more than 177 million above the budget request of last year. If you know, you know, including the counter and crude aerial systems, CUS group three, defeat acceleration and 5G enabled drones, high energy laser atmospheric study and prototype systems. Um, the military is scrambling to figure it out because uh, there's this there's this idea, like I just said, if you can have a $400 drone destroy something that costs hundreds of millions of dollars, then obviously it's a great route to take in the form of a weapon system. But that doesn't change that the counter systems to those drones are costing hundreds of millions themselves. Um, so there's really no good solution here. It's just another deterrence on deterrence system. If you know how we like to build nuclear weapons or we don't build them, we just upgrade their abilities to fly more accurately or something, blah, blah, blah. Um, deterrence seems to be taking the same route this way. They spend uh, billions of dollars producing a fleet that blocks out that blots out the sky and we have to spend tens of million dollars to counter them. It's unfortunate. Here's a few promotional pictures from the Mars system before we move on here. Um, as you saw from the Photoshop thumbnail of the show today and the example of cruise ships being vulnerable to pirates who can now afford tens upon tens of drones, we see that uh, these things are automatically deploying after these things. They have multiple uh, scenarios where 
Um, it's clear they're needed and they're needed now. Now, this isn't the only option, of course, but it is one badass option. I think we all have to sit and admit to ourselves that um, drone killing drones are probably going to be uh, the way of the future. And, um, you know, with, with a layer defense like, I don't know, um, electronic warfare plus a machine gun plus a net plus an eagle plus a freaking drone killing drone. Uh, it's going to be one wild time in the sky. Um, in 2019, a man named um, Levin. Oh, what the hell is his name? I'm sorry. I had it right here. Jason Levin in 2019, um, uh, an engineer at Southern California showed uh, for the U.S. military the ability to take out these drones by hovering a quadcopter in the air and having another drone fly into its presence with a push of a button on his laptop. He destroyed the drone in front of, you know, and military personnel got to see how effective it would be. Now, I'm sure that was already a thought. If you go back to World War II, the idea of V1s attacking old London town and some pilots having to physically use the wing of their aircraft to tip the thing and knock it out of the sky, essentially really dumbed down. That's a kinetic solution. Obviously, shooting it with a machine gun was as well. Uh, but the, the the ability to not use a, a normal munitions while, shoot, while knocking it out of the sky um, and returning to the, your airbase was already proven all those years ago, and he did it again with drones. Now, I don't know if some Area 51 test once did this, and everyone there already knows about it. Like we, you know, we see 60, 40 years later with like the Ryan Aeronautical series of them shooting missiles off drones before, you know, uh, anyone knew it was happening. But it's out there, and companies find it to be one of the most profitable sectors of the defense industry today. In fact, it has some of the lowest overhead and some of the most effective, um, um, you know, outcomes in testing ever. Uh, as I said before, there are multiple different ways for people to counter drones with kinetic, uh, kinetic rounds or kinetic solutions. We're going to go over a few of those real quick. I know I'm trying to be quick here as I do. You don't have to play this show on fast forward. I just talk as fast as possible like the Micro Machines man and hope you get it all as I'm going. Holy cow. Coffee is killing me. Along with, before I get into the other options there, which you've heard a million times from me, along with, uh, um, you know, these kinetic uh, drones from Mars, there's a couple other companies out there that are offering um, solutions as well via kinetic stuff, but they're offering it in a kind of more traditional manner in the sense of, like like these guys right here. Take a look at this thing. This looks like a fighter jet or at least a, uh, uh, you know, maybe even a training drone uh target drone or something a modern day class five target drone or whatever the the, the fact of the matter is that companies are not just offering uh, a drone that flies through another drone like an endo or exo atmospheric kill vehicle they're also offering highly autonomous little fighter jets that go out there and have multiple kinetic options under their wings i mean this thing is crazy looking this is the Cobra Jet, multi-role tactical unmanned combat aerial vehicle, or UCAV, like you've seen a, a, a lot of, equipped with fully autonomous autopilots, uh, autopilot and flight, flight controller and AI microprocessors. Um, it can reach its targets outside the range of any ground-based weapon system, and it can intercept hostile drones at a, um, in a repeatable way. It's uh, rather ridiculous. Sky Defense has launched this system and it has proven extremely effective in 2024 of January this year. They released a, uh, you know, a, a public statement saying that we now have a solution that can go after class one, two, and three drones. It is obviously far more expensive, but uh, it it houses on board everything that's needed, um, including its own situational awareness that is like the tandem systems of the Mars system. You can put a um, a few electronic pieces of equipment surrounding a base and creating an invisible dome, if you will. Um, and then obviously deploy drones whenever you see something coming in to hurt your service members, you know, to protect the force. Um, and you, you see that other systems are offering, how about just patrols of these new UCAV systems that, that can go out and hunt drones themselves. They do not need a fighter pilot. They do not need someone observing them. They, uh, they are aware by detecting these things at a range, they vector at them and they recognize allegedly. Now, this is as far as the, the thing goes, but they recognize that uh, that, you know, the most effective um, path to take, if you will, um, 
a route to take or solution to take when it comes to countering drone swarms. Now, a lot of these tests, though, are done with drone swarms up to like 20. Some tested even less. We've seen Army uh, test multiple drone swarms that were only about, you know, 10 drones at a time doing different jobs. But either way, it seems that the future of, of, of solving the drone swarm problem is just like I said before, there's a deterrence, a layered deterrence. One of them, of course, or a couple of them are some bad mothers out there. I mean, look at that thing. Look at that thing. That thing... <laughs> that thing screams death and destruction towards drones. I mean, could you imagine... Um, could you imagine a, a scenario where... Um, not just these little smart bullets, if you will, but these aircraft deploy and sur and just fly autonomously all day long around the base. And just like some sort of um, Iron Dome bullcrap or, uh, or like, you know, THAAD systems out there, these things can automatically just go off. So you might just be going out your day, you're heading to the PX, you know, you're walking to the PX to go shopping, you're a soldier. I'm going to go buy an expensive piece of celery and think that I'm getting a deal because I'm shopping at the PX. Okay, here's a $40 piece of celery. That's great. It's tax-free? And I don't understand the economy? Great, I'll pay it. And then suddenly you hear the sky erupt, explosions everywhere. You didn't even know the drone swarms were coming. Autonomy versus autonomy. It seems to be real, uh, you know, realized already. We have a quote from them about this specific thing. Our CUAS interceptors, we have armed our Cobra jets with the Viper air-to-air -air weapons, along with other systems. They haven't really labeled what they are. Uh, they are low collateral and offer the most effective means of neutralizing drone swarms of fast-moving kamikaze drones at a fraction of the cost of the current U U CUAS interceptors. One thing for sure, though, there are downsides to these systems. Are they not? Are there not downsides to these systems? I mean, what? Have you ever gone clay pigeon shooting? Uh, hey, we're talking about pigeons again. I don't know why. Have you ever gone clay pigeon shooting or trap shoot, or skeet shooting, whatever you call it? Um, you know, the, the the reason why you use bird or buckshot in other cases uh, is because that <laughs> they're not going to travel for a few miles and, or a mile or two and go shoot some person in their house just washing the dishes. They're going to fall out of the sky and the majority of them that hit the target anyways. They're not going to reach it. They And when they get to the target, uh, you know, far off and away, if they keep traveling, the kinetic energy of these of this uh, dispersed ammunition is very low. What happens when something flying 250 miles per hour shoots an air-to-air -air weapon designed specifically for drones and then you blow this goddamn thing out of the sky? Kinetic energy doesn't suddenly go away just because something's blown into pieces. We could automatically assume that falling debris has its own level of kinetic energy, obviously. And so uh, when these things are now being shot out of the sky over a military base, the force may be protected from the attack of the drones themselves. But how do you defend against the falling debris, especially if you're talking about, say, a thousand drones in a drone swarm? Let's be real, folks. If a company can make drones in Las Vegas take the shape of Captain Kirk breakdancing or something i'm sure they can figure out a way to use those drones and just their kinetic energy alone as a weapon i mean that's just a, an obvious assumption what happens when now you have thousands of drones falling out of the sky what happens if these weapon systems miss these are solutions but there are drawbacks you know there are ways that this can you know th this can be effective but also you know what exactly does that mean when the sky is raining debris of drones. I mean, there's something that we have to think about. There's something that, even though there's solutions out there, there are downfalls, and there's downfalls to every solution. I mean, I don't know much about directed energy systems, but I can imagine if their small window uh, target misses, there might be some trouble. But of course, again, that, that laser is firing into the air rather than arcing over the side of the planet and or the curvature of the Earth or something. Because we have limited time today, and we're almost at 50 or 45 minutes here. Good morning, everyone in the chat. Jason Williams, good to see you. I've seen that face and that name in a long time. Jason Williams says, I predict that sales of 12-gauge buckshot will dramatically increase over the next few years. Yeah. Um, I think, I bet, I think, could smoke a DGI and survive and fly off. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
a lot of those kinetic uh, bullet, smart bullet like round drones um, have been proven to, uh, to be so strong with, a, with these mesh co uh, composite materials they're using and the titanium cores of the system and, and proprietary materials that make their rotor blades up, they actually can survive quite well, including obviously algorithms inside the system that can balance it if it loses one rotor blade, if it loses a whole rotor itself. And, and for that, um, you know, you, you're looking at something that is extremely cost effective. I'm no expert, but I can imagine it takes about, I don't know, five minutes to take a wrench with a powered screw gun or a socket rather and uh, undo a rotor blade and replace it. Look at drone enthusiasts today. They usually come when you buy a drone with multiple rotor blades because they expect them to break. They're made of cheap plastics and uh, you can either 3D print others or go ahead and just put the replacements on there in a very short time. Uh, but these drones that you're looking at here, this uh, Sky Defense of the of um, Sky Defense's, uh, sorry, uh, their um, Cobra Jet uh, are, are considered low collateral drone options, which they don't really get into the specifics of what low collateral drone option is. Of course, if, you know, collateral damage is obviously a movie featuring Arnold Schwarzenegger when he goes to South America to get vengeance on a cartel. No, sorry, I got confused there. My brain just went off into robot mode. Obviously, coll low collateral damage uh, when protecting a military installation or how about an installation that just can't be hit in general? Um, a lot of our military installations or power grids or things like that really can't take any damage. Hell, they can't even take a high wind. A friggin' single branch off a pine tree falls on one and suddenly 500,000 old people are dying because their ACs are gone or their ventilator systems aren't working anymore. I mean, we have major issues to overcome in the United States when it comes to how we are protecting our, our infrastructure and how the infrastructure is built in general. It doesn't make much sense. Hopefully, the advent of these interceptors and, and drone swarms being used actually to attack us on our own, our own land, uh, um, you know, will come at the same time relayed power uh, from drones comes about. Come on, DARPA, get your ass in gear. Anyways, I mean, they've been working on it since the SDI program, but either way. AI, kinetic, drone-killing drones are all the rage of 2024, and the industry is getting tens of millions of dollars with an increased budget every single year that seems at this point is going to be unstoppable. As you know, the National Defense Authorization Act is upwards of a, bi a trillion dollars at nearly $900 billion. I don't know why I said both numbers there, but I'm just rounding out for you to see with a dramatic effect. A trillion dollars. Um. The, the the solutions are varied. There's multiple layers of defense. So quickly, let's look at some other uh, kinetic options out there. Uh, some more ridiculous than others, of course. But uh, either way, they are they are real and they are being used. Some of them, I think, are, are cooler than others because, well, they sound like we're a goddamn, uh, you know, it sounds like some asymmetric options for other nations maybe to, of course, use things that you might see in other movies like featuring aliens or something or something weird or like uh you know we're going to uh fight the ewoks <laughs> or i'm not the ewoks but something like that I, i'm not a i'm not a star wars guy i forget i don't know what i'm talking about here hope you can still hear me okay sorry i moved away from the drone the, the microphone there holy cow holy shnikes here Let's move it on. We got to wrap it up here with a list of uh, other um, options. I just, why do I constantly close stuff during the show and then think I'm going to find it easily when I go to go grab it? Blah, 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 blah. Did I really delete it? Oh my God, you idiot. Hold on a second, folks. Okay. <clears throat> first one's first. We saw the rise of using... Oh, I'm losing everyone. Sorry. We saw the rise of using nets to stop drones. Net guns were one of the first things were invented to counter drones. In fact, net nets were used to cap, you know, catch drones for years. You saw nets on large vehicles. You saw nets on ships. You saw nets in the middle of airfields. And Paul Benowitz probably saw nets in the, at night and drones flying into him was like, how the hell is it taking a 90 degree turn to the ground? Sorry. Um,
Come on now. Okay. Someone said Jason Williams in the chat talking about 12 gauge buckshot, obviously, is another kind of option. We had very simple solutions like soldiers trying to shoot their guns at the drones. We've seen that out there um, already. We've seen soldiers taking nets and net guns to use them. We've seen soldiers literally put nets around buildings they're in and vehicles they're riding in. I mean, we did it when I was deployed, but we didn't use a, a mesh net made out of, uh, you know, fibers or something. We used steel cages we didn't have reactive armor like some other vehicles had so of course when an rpg struck a striker or a you know uh krakatoa mine struck a striker um there was you know basically no way to protect the vehicle so they had these cages around the vehicle in order for the round to hit the cage first and blow up and rather than the physical parts of the or uh, the uh the actual debris piercing the side of the vehicle and it's a uh, lack of major armor for these things. Um, it would uh, hit with most of the energy rather than the actual uh, munitions itself. But that didn't stop other things, of course, because as the adversary recognized in an asymmetrical way that we had these cages on the vehicles and RPGs um, were you had to be in line of sight and we're going to kill someone who's in line of sight of us with an RPG shooting it at us. They switched, of course, to the IED before my time, and the IED became prevalent. And you saw, like, the spike of electronic warfare measures and defensive kind of measures with IEDs, the warlock system, yada, yada, yada. But one thing that actually worked for us and for other units out there is we dangled tanks of water off the side of our vehicles, mixed with about 30% sand. And those Krakatoa mines would, uh, with copper plates would take a shape like a little dagger or spear tip and usually pierce the vehicle. Now they would hit the water, cool instantly, traveling at an unbelievable speed, and uh, and slow down. Again, they didn't, or they weren't the perfect solution, but they in fact worked. The um, you know, there's ways around everything, and the kinetic solution for these things in an asymmetric way are always going to be there. And of course, um, some of my favorite we've we've talked about in the past. Um, One of the way that comes to mind, if you want to compare it to the to the world of UFOs and, and alien movies, and like I just did with Men in Black and, and Independence Day earlier, is the idea that, like in a fictional scenario, we're going to go to a planet, and we're going to have advanced technology like drones out there doing things for us, and the locals, the, 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 uh, the, the natives, aliens to the planet, like some sort of Avatar movie, are going to deploy birds. Birds. Could you imagine a world where your, you know, your unit deploys with 15 drones in its arsenal ready to use for surveillance and for attack if possible, the defensive capabilities, and instead of them being uh, effective, they're met with eagles? Eagles flying through the air, ripping the drones, for not, ripping a wing off, tearing it apart, dropping it to the ground? Hell, some would say the collateral damage of using eagles against drones uh, only endangers the eagle. In fact, because the eagle acts like it's a prey, and if it can, it holds on to the drone until it reaches the ground. We've watched videos of that very thing happening on uh, multiple occasions. I think I still actually have a video of it. Remember that drone thing I used to play? Back in the day, I think I... All right, shush up with the damn audio. I think I have a picture of it somewhere, don't I? Ah, I do. Okay, cool. Take a look at this recon. There's not going to be any audio with this, so don't worry. Eagles don't mess around. That's right, Dorothy, and especially when they're trained to counter some sophisticated drones. Snatch! Now everyone says, what about their little feetsies? Won't they get chopped up? Well, maybe. But in a world where you're going to reduce the collateral damage of shooting drones out of the sky and expensive weapons, I would think, and I don't know anything about eagle keeping. Eagle keeping. I think I found a new career. Train eagles to rob banks. All right, never mind. But the, the idea, of course, is that the one solution for these things is birds. They found to be extremely effective against class one drones. And there's already cities out there that were considering employing falconers, falconeers, falcon nighters, I don't know, uh, to go out there and just like they hired them to kill pigeons because they were destroying 
uh, power uh, infrastructure because they had too much shit on it. They um, then they use these Falcon handlers, whatever they're called, to go destroy those drones um, or those birds. The same concept would be applied. Could you imagine a bird? Could you imagine then a, a, a what is this uh, ancient Ireland or something when you have like a whole uh, you know p- platoon, if you will, of dog handlers with Irish wolfhounds deploying the wolfhounds against this. This, uh, this, this, these uh, Viking foe on horseback, or, or utilizing new methods of war they didn't know about before. Uh, the same concept would actually go to war with a living speed. Like, what are we? This the horse again? What, what is it? It's an actual possibility that 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 would be a cost effective. Uh, the only problems, though, of course, is that a lot of people are saying that if the dr- the bird gets injured, it's never going to fly again. So therefore. Um, you know, you would have to breed, you know, tens upon tens of thousands of them probably to counter what's up there. So maybe in the near term, but not really in the long term, especially in the advent of highly sophisticated jet power drones or electric drones that can maneuver and outrun anything or possibly even kill a bird that's coming anywhere near it. But for now, <laughs> well, there you said it right there. Um, if the drone is there to spy, it's far easier to take down than it is for uh, for it to go after something that has a weapon system on board. Yikes. What other options do we have out there for kinetic round, for kinetic options? You just heard about collisions, projectiles, non-explosive projectiles, and explosive projectiles, such as foam and rubber bullets are being deployed out of burst system. Um, weapons on top of uh, MRAP vehicles, buffaloes, and strikers or, or even possibly uh, um, ver- newer variants of the Abrams or whatever tanks being deployed in Germany and other countries right now, um, you see that on top is going to be a burst system. Like the entire air is almost, uh, it gets filled with what, like a claymore shoots. Um, when you explode these things and these uh, this debris all over the place, it's indiscriminate though. It just kills everything in the air. So if you have your drones in the air as well as their drones in the air, it's not really discriminating between the two and destroying both. Again, where they're extremely effective method of shooting tens of thousands of pellets in the air if need be. It also, again, a drawback with a lot of these systems, it does not discriminate and it will take out everything. Is there an avenue in the smart bullet outside of the drone world though? Is there a future where rounds fire at a far less muzzle velocity, but also can turn directions and change, especially when it's terminal phase of these drones, some of these kamikaze drones, a lot of companies are, you know, uh, uh, I'm sorry, a few companies are basing a lot of their work off of this idea that a regular bullet, you know, went from being a regular bullet to a rifled bullet, blah, 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 keep going on and on until time all the way through the last thou- 100 years, where suddenly you see, um, or a couple hundred years, rather, you suddenly see a, a, a bullet become extremely accurate. Well, why would that ever stop? Um, if you look at the exacto testing through um, through DARPA and what's available on the internet, you can see this is going somewhere. Um, is regular kinetic ammunition going to change into all smart rounds? So, you know that scene? Oh, no, they did it again, Recon. The fifth element. Where Zorg fires the weapon towards the people he's selling the gun to, and all the rounds go towards the target he's already marked. These sons of bitches think they're going to pull a fast one on us. We know what they're doing. They're leaking this stuff through movies. I propose that we watch all old sci-fi movies and just see how the government's leaking information through them and not just the producers, the directors of the movies doing their due diligence and asking people who were in the know at the time where they think things are going to go and reading studies out there from nonprofit industries who, well, are extremely profitable, but uh, that are suggesting where and what technologies will be used in the time. I don't know. But we are at that hour, Recon. I said I was only going to do an hour today. Um, If you or anyone you know has any more information about the future of drone killing drones and smart kinetic rounds to take out C uh, to take out UAS, please go over to the regurgia blog, sign up over there and have a discussion with us. And of course uh, you will, um, you know, you'll be part of the evolving story that we're trying to figure out. 
I personally think the Mars system, like that other system I showed the other day, I'm, I'm forgetting the name right now, I apologize, but as well as the Cobra Jet are going to be one badass options for a lot of these things um, because there's no explosives on board. The reduction of, uh, of, uh, of bombs um, and having to worry about um, some of these systems not performing the way they should, fail safes not working, and the autonomy not being as great as it would be, um, uh, you know, or, or something. The upkeep of things like this. I mean, if a video game has to be updated constantly to get it, keep it working, keep the bugs out of it, and keep people from um, manipulating the weak parts about the game, uh, you know, uh, the vulnerabilities of it. Well, so will this. Uh, that doesn't necessarily make you know system upkeep any cheaper, as you probably know. The military selects products that are are not only extremely effective, but um, but they require they have the you know they cost less and require less upkeep. Now, um, highly technical AI solutions, I know nothing about. I'm just reading off the internet. I'm an idiot. But I will say they are clearly not the most cost effective right now, considering we keep talking about how these cheap drones can kill these things, but the countermeasures for these cheap drones are costing tens of millions of dollars. Thank you for being here, Dorothy. Ladies and gents, boys and girls, this is only a little bit. There's obviously so much more out there. Subcategories, different branches of research. We don't even know what we don't know. You know what I'm saying? That's not that's not the quote. But uh, check out everything from smart bullets to burnt airburst rounds being used. Um, and of course, the layer defense and in, in non-kinetic answers are already out there. The military has decided to go with a dual system on a lot of their vehicles right now. Both a, a weapon that shoots in the air and, of course, uh, an electronic weapon that goes with it, a defensive countermeasure that goes with it. For where you can't stop one with autonomy, you can stop it with kinetic rounds. Um, so, again, there's downfalls to that. Where are those bullets going to land? If they don't blow up in the air, what happens? Um, it's eerily similar, though, to World War II for multiple reasons. I got to end it on that. I mean, the V1 was the advent for a lot of these systems. Of course, you know that they were around a lot a lot longer for reconnaissance autonomy or wireless controlled rather not autonomy um has been around for uh, you know for the last 130 god dang years when it comes to our 100 and you know 25 years um and drones are, have been flying for a long time but when it came to world war ii and seeing um not just the v1 attacks on london you also had you know the invasion of normandy where flak cannons were being used like crazy well what do you think there's a they're proposing right now a smart flat cannon system out there that is able to both electronically detect and track and learn from each drone, but also fire them out of the air rather indiscriminately. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and kittens, I got to get the hell out of here. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for spending it with me. I know you could be anywhere and you spent it with me this morning. Do me a massive favor, hit that like and subscribe. I really could use the subscribe if you're one of these people that watch but don't subscribe. I get it. I'm not. I, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. But it does help me immensely, and it only takes you about one second to do it. Um, ladies and gents, I'm out. Remember, and don't forget, home is where you make it. You like to see homos naked? And I quote once again from Genesis. Well, we're waiting. I've been on a lot of shows, but there's no better crowd than this right here. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. I still think you came out here just to cover your ass. <laughs> Don't make it sound like a fucking fat, plumpy, delicious cock. <laughs> Why are you gay? He says I'm gay. You are gay. In my opinion, Recon... If you're going to fight the war on terror, the first place we should start is this nation's haunted houses.